There's an infinite number of universes out there. In many of them, there is a podcast by us. In one of them, it's good. Please enjoy. You know, I've noticed a big problem with our generation is that we never keep our things charged. Like what? Like my laptop's about to run out of battery. But that's all right because we're from the future. Where there is no batteries. <laughs> there is no battery we left. Are, we are all, every surface is a battery and you just throw the thing at the wall and it goes, delicious. But this is a warning from future us that if you're using a device that is low battery, you should probably charge it. This is sort of like a millennial thing where people live on the edge. Don't leave your things until they're... It's the M word. <laughs> That wasn't, that wasn't at all an M word introduction. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the But Yeah Podcast, the place for friends to talk about things they're really, really, really excited about. I- I'm Eamon. I'm Zeb. And what are you drinking this week, Zab? A giant ice cube as big as a golf... No. No, I wouldn't play golf with this this cube. This is at least as big as a tennis ball. As big as a golf cube. As big as a golf... Go- is that what I said? Yes. <laughs> as big as a golf cube. <laughs> it's a new putt-putt course. It's, I assume, on ice? Mm, maybe or oh, it's kind of like Lego-y and you sort of slide it along and then it lands perfectly really satisfying into the square hole it needs to go into and it's just like wow and then you can't get it out but it's like a big puzzle and you just you, you like bespoke build a golf course mm-hmm. <laughs> out of these cubes right what are you drinking I'm also drinking an ice cube <laughs> <laughs> I drank all my water. What and what shape is your ice cube? It's actually mine is um the shape of a basketball cube. <laughs> what kind of what's that sport like? But it's also sized down to ice cube size. Does it is it do you do you mean like it's bouncy or it makes you dribble? <laughs> no, it's like you know in basketball how like they run up to the the three point line and Throwing then ice <laughs> at the floor. No, they ha- they have the perfect ice cube and they have to keep it cool as much as they can by holding it like with their fingertips and then they slot it into the perfect square <laughs> and it goes down no. into the into they jump through the air and they go shoop and it just like slides perfectly in and everyone's just like what everyone's so happy yeah because it's so satisfying to see exactly um no it's actually really coincidental i didn't actually think about the fact that we're both drinking ice water um, when I stole Hannah's intro um, from from way too broad, uh, a, a podcast that I stole the intro off of and that I enjoy um, because there's like, I don't know if it's a running joke, but it's more just like a thing that happens every time where one of their, their, their good friends there, Ben, always they like go around like, what are you guys drinking? And then what, they're like craft beer and then like this nice wine. And then Ben's always like, I got an ice water. <laughs> So we're both like oh, ice water. Well, we're both drinking Ben's drink of um, choice, but it's also it's really <laughs> it's really coincidental because I like sent like <laughs> I had this thing stuck in my head um, of like a jazz song about loving ice water, and, and that's I, why you're drinking ice water. No, and then I like <laughs> got to be like this song, <laughs> and so I've been listening to like jazz instrumentals while I'm driving and like making up songs about ice water. By the by, the famous jazz musician Ice Cube. But like, as if they were from like Ben's perspective of like how much he loves ice water. And then I happened to like the other day send um, Hannah just like a video of me singing one randomly. And now this coincidence has happened where I've had Hannah on my mind to steal her intro because I wanted to do that. But also, we happened to be drinking ice water. We stole two things. We stole two things. We stole, <laughs> we stole the intro and the drink. It's, I don't know. I'm sure their show... <laughs> I'm sure their show has other things. But these are the well, two we'll main things. we'll steal those too. <laughs> these are the two main things. Uh, let's, let, I'm sure by the end of this episode, we'll have stolen a third thing somehow. Probably. Um, 
so you know what's really good about our show is when we like to spend five minutes before we get to like the topic thing that we're gonna say that we usually like try to get out of the way immediately so we can jump off to other topics <laughs> yeah we we um put off the thing which is our string springboard into another thing so let's go to our springboard but first what it, but, but i like to think this is clever foreshadowing i mean this topic links actually quite well into what day it is no it doesn't How I, does it? <laughs> let's say, hang on but first before we go to the springboard section of the show as we call it every week um let's spring on over to the thankfulness section um, where <laughs> I just want to thank um, Hannah, of course, um, Kyle from the M Word, um, Angele. Oh man, I've butchered that name. That can't possibly be the way that I say it. On nah, Angele, man, you French, got it. French, Angele, <laughs> Colin, Teflon, Tracy, and Crispy Steve <laughs> for <laughs> for tuning in, listening. Um, I've sent some of you um, buttons in the mail. That we recently got with our updated logo. If you all push them at the same time, if you all push, it happens. These metal buttons at the same time, it will summon one one of us <laughs> for one question or wish. But like, it's total monkey paw rules, and not we're not genies. I've also um, everyone that I sent buttons also got a piece of like a secret. Um, if you can figure that out, um, which actually relates to our whole like ice thing ice but cubes? anyway is, is this is the secret i am have an ice cube well i did i write <laughs> i wrote thirsty for more and then i put the clue there like that's the secret <laughs> no the secret is under like you have you have to piece it together that people will figure it out okay um, okay but if you want a button or if you it's also like we'll send you some emails we'll send you, you some me? merch occasionally I want a button. no you don't get one give me a button it's more important that these people get them um you can go to buttyearpodcast.com forward slash friend and that'll get you to a form that you can sign up with your address and your email and we'll send you something who knows it'll be a mystery what and you'll have a chance um if you follow the clues to get something even better if you follow the clues properly and figure it out a really big button <laughs> and, yeah, like a like a button that when you press it, it, it just says our podcast episode. <laughs> I'm going to release each of our episodes as buttons, like big buttons that are just episodes of our podcast. Like people release things on disc. I think that's so outdated. I think we need to move into the button era and just have release will it release fifty buttons or for our, fi- for our fifty twenty second episode. What about? Um, a greeting card that plays your entire episode of your podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And if you close it, it starts from the start. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't stop. It just, <laughs> it just redoes it. A bit louder. A book that is a normal novel, but as you try to read it, at a random interval while you read the book, it starts playing the podcast episode. Oh, my God. While you try to read. Um commentary for the book more people should release book commentary we have movie commentary but why don't authors release books with play their commentary over the top while you read it i think that'd be dope (laughs) so you're like trying to read the book and the author like chimes in (laughs) yeah (laughs) just like i thought really hard about this chapter i was just like you know i don't know about the conjugation over here (laughs) and the editor really battled with me here on this one or no no i think how we could do it is we do a second book that you read next to the other book, like the original book. And alongside <laughs> that, you have the author's notes in a second book and you turn the pages at the same time yeah. to follow along. Or it like layers over the top. Like maybe it's sort of see-through and it like, <laughs> like changes bits or something yeah. like that. Or like um, just like a cool little picture on the edge and you flip the pages and it makes a little animation. Um, speaking of which, it's animation day. It's 28th of October. It's a Sunday. Um, historically, um, the day for animation to be enjoyed. You know, like Sunday morning animation. You know, I, I watched it on Saturday morning. No, oh, weird. But we had. We didn't really have a normal upbringing, though. I didn't have Channel 10 for ages. Oh, no, that doesn't mean anything there anymore. I didn't have The Simpsons for ages. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have The Simpsons or Celebrities. I didn't, I didn't have The Simpsons channel for my formative years. Oof. So everyone around me was making Simpsons references and like snapping their fingers and pointing at each other and going, eee. And I was just like, oh, I get it. 
<laughs> his mill house. <laughs> <laughs> I was able to sort of work it for Pokemon because it's the same channel as well. <laughs> oh, really? But it was like an old enough TV that like it would spin out of control on this on the visual display. Like it would cycle, like spin down like it was on tape. You do make a good point about the fact that we could just talk about The Simpsons for this whole episode because it's animation day. It is, yeah, it's an animation. They animated it, I assume. I assume it's not live action. That would be terrifying. Like, what if they're just yellow people that they just put a- they drew line art over the top of? They, like, rotoscoped all the characters. Yeah. God. Yeah, that's why it's so smooth. <laughs> and camera the camera angles are so complex. Um, so... Uh, let's just take a little bit of the copy from Days of the Year as we are want to do. Uh, one one weird thing about this. Okay, so it's animation is everywhere these days. And most of us have been raised on it. Starting with our Saturday morning cartoons. It's a Sunday. It's Sunday. Yeah, it's, it's a Sunday. It's, it's, the day is celebrated on a Sunday. They've celebrated it on a Sunday. I mean, of course, every not every year it's a Sunday. But. Once every they really, seven. They really dropped the ice ball on this one, I think. Um, so, please, it's, it's talking a little bit how cartoons are normally paired with a sugary bowl of cereal. Mm, um, mm. But it's talking about how our world has been shaped by this amazing art form. Do you want a little bit of history about this day, though? I do. Um, so, the International Film Association was originally established in France. Ooh. Oh, well, it ties in with Angelet, which I definitely, I feel like that name is definitely being butchered. It doesn't sound right. Um, and was organized for the purpose of recognizing all forms of cinema and art. Among them was animation, and thus they developed International Animation Day in 2002 to serve as the pinnacle event in the celebration of the rising art of animation. So they were like, in 2002, they were like, wow. That's so recent. This animation thing is really hot. People are loving it. <laughs> Have I've heard of this new cool, this cool new thing. It's where you put a heap of things together and then they move. Wild. <laughs> 2002. Ironic- ironically, right as CGI took off. That's like after and the- we stopped doing yeah. animation. <laughs> That's like after the whole wave of the 90s cartoons where everyone was just like a blob that looked like it got like mashed into a shape of a human. You mean the animations or the- like <laughs> are kid- we watching them? <laughs> kids animated shows in the 90s. Yeah. Maybe in 2002, that was like officially over. Like all mm. those old cartoons like um, Hey Arnold and like- Hello, Arnold. Welcome, Arnold. <laughs> and how are you doing, house. Arnold? <laughs> Why don't you call Arnold? <laughs> are you okay, Arnold? <laughs> Arnold, can you hear me? And everyone's favorite spinoff. What up, Arnold? Where you been? Arnie and the Funky Bunch. Um, see, I think all those ones got like killed off in 2002. And then like thus started the new wave of French animation. And that's how we got all our good stuff. There was a few French animations that, like, I didn't realize were French that I watched heaps as, like, a, a tween. A tween. One was Cornelius. Oh, Bernie, Bernie and Cornelius. It had a talking dog. And he was like, we've got to keep this a secret that my dog talks. And, you know, it was a fairly typical story. They were just described. What was it called? Something in Cornelius. It was French, and it blew my mind. Because they weren't speaking French, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> But I was like, wow, it doesn't look French. And then I went, what looks French? <laughs> How would they look French? Yeah, it's a good point. Like, um, I'm guessing it would look wrong to anyone. Oh, no, they would have... Like, it depends how well the overdub was done. It was just... It's a, it's an animation. So, like, I guess it's... Yeah, but, like, there could be bad overdubs of animation. Like, like, yeah, I, I guess. Like, but the... <laughs> Like it's, the, I guess they don't think of every word. Yeah, but that's they? like that's like the joke of like a Japanese animes that get put into the US and then like mm. the mouths don't match right, and so it's funny for some reason. Mm. But like in the original, it definitely probably matched. Mm. Yeah, they'd say like one word, but then in the mouth goes for fifteen minutes. Yeah, or something, or the opposite. I guess I don't know. I bet that's just bad editing. Like I assume, I don't know. This one seemed good, well edited. Like it didn't see any there were any issues like that. It just surprised me. So, what are, some, what are some other titles of shows that you want to remember? I want to remember. Oh, man. Lil Elvis. There's an Australian one, but that screams it's from Australia. Does <laughs> Cause it, though? Because there's, like, they're playing... I guess... They're in the, the outback. <laughs> I don't remember associating that one with Australia. 
What? <laughs> they're in the outback. One's playing a didgeridoo in their band. <laughs> really? <laughs> and they have really Australian accents. <laughs> I, don't, I don't recall it being that Australian, but... They play marbles. Is that an Australian <laughs> thing? They, there's like a marble mine where they get the magic marbles from. Is that which, what I mean, the mines What's more were? Australian than mining? Oh my god, I'm remembering now. Yeah, you had like the magic marble. <laughs> And that's like yeah. what the evil guy wanted all the time. Yeah, and he, and he kept always. But there'd be some kids playing marbles, and the villain would come in and go and just use his magic marble to win all their marbles. And then they'd be like, "Oh man, this uh, this grown ass man just stealing all their marble, all these kids' marbles all the time, it blatantly sounds, cheating to do it." He sounds just like a bad substitute teacher. <laughs> man, <laughs> do you ever have a, a substitute teacher stealing everyone's marbles? No, but like, you know, substitute teacher, you're like sitting there with your sandwich and you like your LCMs and you'll be over and be like, hey, you want to trade my banana for all your snacks? And you're like, okay. And then he takes them and they're gone. Tricking all these kids. Man, if I was a substitute teacher, that'd be a great way to have fun. It's like, hey, you want to trade this big one for that, that this big shiny <laughs> coin for that little crappy looking coin? I assume other currencies have that situation where 50 cents is bigger than $2. I think that's kind of an Australian thing. There'd be, there'd be something analog, uh, analog, uh, similar, analogous, analogous. <laughs> analogous. Um, speaking of um, Australian things, we, I should quickly mention the poll we did on Twitter um, at But Yeah Pod, where I asked if you think of us as an Australian show or if you think we just have accents or you don't even hear the accents. I don't think we. I don't. I, I answered that. <laughs> you, you're not meant to sway the rating. I, I don't hear any accents at all. <laughs> um, so it, it ended up being um, the winning vote was we just have accents. We're not. We're not extremely Australian, which I think is a good happy oh, medium. Bugger. Oh, bugger! Oh, you are cool, blimey! Stop. Wait, that's that's British. Please don't. Blimey! Wait. Bugger. <laughs> See, and I told you you weren't Australian. Ah, oh, crackers. <laughs> I'm going to... That's Wallace. Go, go down to the uh, bottle O. It's going to start adding more O's to things. That's the Australian thing. Mm, Amino? No. That's, that's, is, that, is that your Australian nickname? Amino? I got Zebo. If you want to do an Australian thing, all you have to do is appropriate enough cultures until they all blend together enough that you can get away with it. That's all you have to do. Um, I'm appropriating Australian culture right now. <laughs> back to um, animation. What were we doing? We we're just like you talking. Know what the most Australian animation is? What's that? <laughs> that Siggy Butts brain guy. Oh, yeah. It <laughs> they is. did the Rick and Morty episode <laughs> yeah. randomly, like the April Fool's one. What was if the name of that? I've seen that. Pardon? What was the name of that? Uh, Hang on, I'm just entering it into the database right now, finding out. Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty Australia. Um, it was it Bush was, World Adventures. Yeah. It was, Adult Swim. Oh. You probably saw it if you know about Rick and Morty. You probably didn't because like, it's a pretty niche thing to look at. Everyone, every Australian who likes Rick and Morty watched it and we're like, yeah, I mean, yeah it played on TV, like, as an episode. <laughs> That's wild. But, like, everyone was pretty angry at it. They were like, what is this? I don't get it. What is this? But here in Australia, we were like, oh, man, he referenced the town I know. He said... Bendigo. Ballarat. Bendigo. Bendigo. I'm going to go down to Bendigo in Morty. That's great. The, t it the, the mayor or whatever of Bendigo was like, mm, we're not actually like that, <laughs> by the way. That's, that's a fake... We're it's, not a blank desert with literally no things. Yeah, that was um that was done by Michael Cusack, who also yeah, does a bunch of other ones that are very um bogany Australian. Yeah, if you want to appropriate Australian culture, it's the one stop shop to learn some. Yeah. <laughs> this is the height. If you wanna you wanna this is what real life's like here in Australia. If you wanna wanna know what real life is like in Australia, you just watch Michael Cusack videos, The Big Les Show, and um, probably Sexual Lobster. Yeah. He's got yeah. an Australian accent. Although he's not Sexual Lobster anymore. What is he? He accidentally changed his channel's name. What is it? Now it's uh, uh, Saucy Tales or something. <laughs> greasy Tales. It's, it, yeah, it's Greasy Tales. That's him now. So they're all good. Uh, well, I mean, if you they're like not, surreal humor. They're not good, really. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm disagreeing with that. I think they're wonderful and the highest art form and they should be on TV. 
I think some of them are. We don't really have any Australian animation anymore. Our industry died, I think. Although I don't watch TV. I don't know. The the last I saw from all the the creatives in Australia is all the creative stuff is dead. Like Mm. indie game dev, there's like all the the grants and stuff for that died out. There's Mm. some like some bill pass where they just decided not to support it. You're like, yeah, no more of that. Pretty much. So like it's, it's... I'm of two minds with that. I mean, on the one hand, it's like, well, I mean, yeah, funding's good, but it'd be good if it also stood on its own. I don't know. I wish, yeah. Mm. I'd like to work in these industries, but they don't exist here. Yeah. Wah, wah. Wah, wah. Oh, well. Oops, we done messed up our creative industry. I'm sure it'll come back. We just got to go to YouTube. Mm. That's where the lobster and the Michael Cusack went. I think that's where they started. Yeah. Well, Michael Cusack's sort of big now. I don't know where Greasy Tails is these days. I mean, he still <laughs> makes them. Um, do you want to know how to celebrate Animation Day? Yes. Oh, How To Basics also. It's not an animation, but he's also Australian. <laughs> well, let's just list all our favorite Australian YouTubers. Yeah, yeah. yeah just how to right, basic. Uh, highlight some kin. All right, go on, please. <laughs> okay. Um, to celebrate it, uh, suggests to pick up a series of films that represent the various ages of animation. So get like a nice like buffet of animation from original Disney Mickey Mouse cartoons all the way through classic Wizards film and into modern shows like Avatar. Ooh, Ooh Avatar. Films. The show that most magnificent blending of traditional filming and new. Yeah. Wait, yeah. the blue the blue people Avatar no, or the Avatar the last Avatar. No. Avatar the Fire. Yeah. Water. Wait. Air. Water again. <laughs> These are the three elements that bind us. Yeah. Two, because I mean, there's a lot more water, realistically. <laughs> Although I guess probably air is the most abundant. Maybe. I've been watching Avatar, The Last Airbender with um, friends on like a screen Man. share. You started watching it? It's such a good time. We sit there. I've been, try- um, I've been trying to get you to watch that for decades. <laughs> Water. It's wonderful. Air. Fire. Earth. Long ago, the th- four nations lived in harmony. But that all and changed when the Fire Nation attacked. I know that one from the meme. Yeah. yeah I've seen good. the rest of it. And now uh, he's back and he's better than ever, but he has a lot to learn. But I believe one day Aang will be the real airbender. The real airbender. He's the real airbender. Avatar, the real airbender. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not. That's the twist. Like, they think uh, they think there's an airbender. Like, this is alternate take. Alternate take. Uh, original OC production. It's Avatar, the real airbender, but he's not. They are extinct. And he's just like, <laughs> I'm pretending. an airbender. And they're like, whoa. And he's just like doing sleight of hand and stuff. And he's really bad at everything. And Ooh. He's just tricking them. Yeah, or maybe, like, magic exists and he can, like, harness it a little bit, but he's only enough to pretend. Yeah, like, they're, they're everyone else is benders and he's the only wizard. <laughs> and, like, magic isn't real, and then he's just, like... <laughs> I don't know. He does alchemy from Full Metal Alchemist instead. Which, I mean, that's also not magic. That's science. Yeah. The equivalent exchange. No, that's a very good show. Um, and I've been watching it with friends on a screen share and just like um, having our voice chats on, but not talking because we don't want to interrupt. But occasionally, mm. like, um, we'll also have the side chat running. So we'll be like typing like jokes about it. And mm. then, like, occasionally something will break out so much everyone will start laughing over the top of it. It's good times. Yeah. It's a great show. It's like, it's actually like. So on like TV Tropes, which is like a page which you can get lost in, now that I've mentioned, I may have cursed you to a a lost amount of time, a time skip. Um, Like Avatar has like the longest page on it because it's got so much stuff in it and it's done so well with like all of its bits. It's a clever show. So yeah, um, if you're celebrating Animation Day, um, just get like a bunch of animations and watch them. I think that's really all you can do. Watch all of Futurama. See if you can get through The Simpsons up to season I've, 12. Um. <laughs> I'm going to watch some Studio Ghibli. That's what I'm going to do. It's one of those things that I haven't experienced. Everyone's like, well, 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 Princess Mononoke. So I'm like, all right. I, I've watched, I think I watched the Howl's Moving Castle once. Flying Castle. Now, is it Howl's- pronounced 
Ghibli huh? or Ghibli or Angele? I don't know. One of them. <laughs> I know how it's spelled. <laughs> no one said it out loud around me. Ghibli? Is this like a GIF GIF thing? Ghibli? Ghibli? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's confusing because then there's also Gifly. <laughs> yep, and Gifly. <laughs> Studio Gifly. <laughs> Studio Giffy. <laughs> Yeah, coincidence with how that like I didn't know that this was a day coming up, but I'm just trying to get into animate like playing with animation at the moment. Like I've always had the opportunity, but I bought a light board. Like you know, I went on this long quest on the weekend. Like, that's was, actually the fascinating. And speaking of quests, let's go into the ad zone. Okay. Oh man, I wish my ice cubes are so small. I wish there was something larger that could keep me cool through summer. Well, that's that, it. That, you boys are in luck. We've got the big cube. This cube, it's it's uh, this is this is an audio cast, but let me visually let me describe it with words. It's big. It's cubular. It's the size of a uh, portable freezer. <laughs> But it's a cube. It is portable. It is kind of like a portable freezer, but it, instead, it's it's gradually melting. You better if you you'll cool your room. It'll make you thirsty, but then less thirsty because you lick it. It's it's delicious. Hence <laughs> the ice lick. <laughs> it's, it's 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 it'll keep you cool. Put them in your freezer. It's it's just one big cube. It's an ice cube. This ice cube's the size of a dog. Just sit in your living room. Uh, watch how long it lasts. It'll last longer than you think. But if you're a bit thirsty, just give it a lick. Just give it a lick. The lick, the salt, the giant cube. It's a, it, It's both art and nourishment. It is an air. It is a, like an air conditioner. It probably makes the house cold. Put a fan in behind it. It'll blow the cool air everywhere. It's delicious. It's the ice lick. All right, we're back. Welcome. What have you been up to? Um, I need, and this is not not really related to animation, but like, you know how we came away from like your story and we, we were going to come back to it? Yeah. Instead, um, I need a coffee name. A coffee name? Like a name for the coffee or like a name for you that is for when you're drinking coffee? Not for not for like when I'm drinking coffee to just like refer to myself. No, I need a coffee order. <laughs> Don't talk to me until I'm coffee aiming. <laughs> no, and you put on your coffee like you you like get up in your pajamas, and then you go like Superman like <laughs> get up in a phone booth, but it's a coffee chamber <laughs> like get changed, and it's got a big a big latte a big L on it. Yeah, it's like, what's the, the 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 chemical symbol for caffeine on your shirt? Yeah, and you go, oh, I'm coffee aiming. Well, it's don't talk to me until I'm Steve. <laughs> is that is that your coffee name, no, Steve? No, that's not good enough. I need a coffee ordering name. <laughs> okay, wait. So is this is this for the name for the coffee you're inventing? No, this is a name for like when I go to a cafe or. A- oh, because your name is spelled with six Y's and an X. <laughs> yeah, like your name is like your name is like five different words, but my name is like five different letters that don't make any sense together. Yeah, it's just a, a, a someone just mashed a keyboard. I'm pretty sure my name <laughs> is the acronym of your name. <laughs> it's like it's like they were like, okay, we got to name this kid, and then they just went much like naming fi- how I name files. They just sort of went, I'm not spending five <laughs> seconds writing that out. <laughs> flop 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 one. <laughs> yeah, my name is a key smash. Yuffa 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 yuffa. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, how about how about you just spell your name different? I suppose you're still saying it though, unless you give it to him on a note. With a pronunciation that written. defeats the whole purpose. <laughs> what, if, what if we give you a more complicated name? Like, just lean into making it difficult for for the baristas. Maybe we'll. What we'll do baristas. is we'll think of a few right now, and then we'll put it to a poll, and then we'll get to your Co- animation story. Okay, number one, Coffee Boy. Like, Yo, yeah, fair. <laughs> I want my coffee. <laughs> 
Can I just say boy? Boy. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a uh, large cap for boy. B-O-I or B-O-Y? Doesn't matter. However they or interpret like, or it. Or like the fine. floating thing on the ocean. Anything's going to be better than Yemen? Amen? Amen? Amy? Amen. At least something consistent, I guess. Yeah, boy. Boy. Uh, how about how about a how about man? And they go, hey man. No, go back <laughs> to go, year six. Just, just yell me out, a. Hey. Go, just give me a shout. Uh, in Australian though, I'm man. <laughs> hey man. Maybe I should just really... say put the letter a on there. Just the a. I'm a. That's I am a. <laughs> Like they'd be like, hey, are you are you here to hit uh, hit someone? Are you murdering someone with this coffee? Are you from the internet? Are you anonymous? <laughs> All right, um, quick experiment. Um, forget my name exists. Um, yeah. Ready? Look at my face when it comes up. All right. That's my name. You look a little bit like Daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> Daredevil. <laughs> look, I, I've been watching the new season, and I guess you kind of look like Matt Murdock. <laughs> so, what is that the character's name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Matt Murdock. <laughs> Murdock. Yeah, I could go with two names, like a full name, like Mulder. What's Mulder's last name from the X-Files? Isn't Mulder the surname? How is that? That would be an awful first name. <laughs> yeah, I guess it this, probably This is. is my child, Moldy. <laughs> <laughs> Fox. Ah, <laughs> like, oh, like, Fox. But then you get... What? His first name is Fox. Fox Moldy. Fox Mulder. Weird. That sounds like a a name from like Metal Gear Solid, <laughs> something like that. It's like Solid Fox. My name Metal is Fox Antelope. Mulder. Look at these bipeds I crafted. You should. Okay. What I reckon you should do is is you should bring up a fantasy name generator, <laughs> download an app for it, and use that each time you order a coffee. All right. All right. I'll give myself three tries. Let me get a fantasy name generator up. Um. <clears throat> It's going to be great. All right. Should I go human or just anything? No, I'll go something else. Fantasy names. Go El uh, Elvish. That'll be even more difficult to pronounce than your actual name. Jeez. Okay. I have more Ys. <laughs> all right. I could be... All right. I'll go for the... I'll go the first three names, which is Glarald, <laughs> Neven, <laughs> or Raven. Nathan. Glarald, Neven, or what? <laughs> Glarald... Neven, Raven. I like Glarl. Well, <laughs> the first one that I already forgot. Glarl. It's kind of like Harold, but the first letter is G L. Glarl. I feel you should. Two of those are the name Glarl Reben. <laughs> your new coffee name. You don't have to use the surname, but I mean you could. All right, so we got a few options. We got Boy. We got Glarl. Um, we got Fox Mulder. <laughs> Um, and we'll leave it to everyone to send in ones to our Twitter, at ButYearPod, and we'll put a vote up. Um, so what have you been doing this week? Just chilling. Just chilling, you know, with my ice cube, my giant ice cube, chilling, because it's cold. Mm. It's not cold. It's a cool surface. You know where it's not cold? Queensland. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's Queensland. Is. It's hot up there. Down here probably. in the south, it's nice and cold. Yeah. Except when you get yeah, he- seven stories up, then it starts to warm up. Yeah. Is it hot there yet? It's finally shorts weather here. It's shorts weather, but not not in my room. <laughs> like you, what your one like your is your room the ice cube of the place? It may very well be. Wow, that sounds kind of good. I, I'd always dress for winter if I could. Oh no no! I meant it. For some reason, I said. For some reason, I equated heat with not being shorts weather. Because if it does get too hot, then it's not shorts weather anymore either. Oh, it's too hot. Time to put more layers on. Yeah. It's the only way to fight it. No, no, I misspoke. Um, it's not shorts weather in here. <laughs> it's, oh, wait. It's, no, it is wait, shorts weather It is shorts weather? Is it hot or cold? <laughs> it's uh, hot. Okay. That's, that's shorts weather. But outside, it's cold. Right. So, you have your shorts... Uh, maybe shorts that like zip into pants as you leave or like they have little curtainy bits and then you go and then it drops to the bottom part of the pants thus transforming your outfit for all environments yeah or like jorts but then you keep the bottom 
parts that you cut off and then you put them back on when you go outside. You cut them off. <laughs> Just you have to cut them off each time. Yeah, and then stitch them back cut on. Cut off jorts. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you don't stitch them back on. You just like put like some good um, like zippers or Velcro. Velcro. Everyone had some Velcro long pants at some point. Yeah, I think I did once. I had zip ones. Yeah, I was like these are the coolest things ever, and everyone around me went, "No, they're not." And I was like, "I don't know why they're not though." Yeah, but they all everyone they're... owned those at some point. These are pants that can also be shorts. Why are people? Why do people object to these transforming pants? <laughs> The only way this would be any better is if it also zipped into a shirt, which zipped into short or long sleeves, also into a singlet. If there were just zippers on every possible joint on a full jumpsuit, <laughs> like, and you could make whatever outfit you wanted, that's the only way it would be better. Yeah. Jumpsuit, jumpsuit. And you could even wear it so it's just like up. the shirt, the lower parts of the pants, and the outer parts of the sleeve, <laughs> but with no you know, no arms or upper legs. How dense can your clothing get with zippers before it starts to lose integrity? Well, I, I just think it makes it more integri- in- integral. It turns it into armor eventually. I guess. Like, if you... Because, like, zippers come in, like... I'm guessing they come, like, in, like, a sheet. That you just cut out as much yeah. as you need. It's, so it's a, so it's it's yeah. You can just completely unzip it. It's one zipper, <laughs> and you can zip it all oh, the way off into this God. big strip, and then you wind it up like tape. <laughs> you have um you have like a jumpsuit, but it's been yeah. ma- it's been um you have a bunch of physicists calculate exactly how they would create such a thing to make the path for the zipper to travel to cover all possible locations of the clothing. And there's just one <laughs> zip all the way. Yeah. And you take... It'd be perfect. It, you can completely unzip it and it rolls up and it fits in your pocket. Yeah. And that'd be cool. And then, then take, <laughs> you can just take off all your clothes and put it in your pocket. <laughs> you'd go back to those teens who said your long pants with the zipper in the middle where the shorts <laughs> come off. You just show up in this dump like, like, oh yeah? Who's cool now? <laughs> And they'll be like, wow. And they'll probably do the Fortnite dance. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a sign of respect. Yeah, I assume. Isn't that... But I feel like whenever I played Fortnite, it hasn't been. <laughs> no, but in real life, if someone does the floss thing, that means it's like a really high symbol of respect nowadays. It means kinship. Yeah. It means, it means you understand them and get them. Which I wouldn't. <laughs> I'd be just standing there naked with my zipped off... <laughs> Clothing being like, I'm in public. Ha ha, I win. Take that. Suckers. It would probably zip down and still cover your junk. <laughs> but just your junk. Um, so speaking of junk, um, what what junk have you been up to this week with your animation stuff you were going to talk about? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, there's not a lot to it. I got a light board. It's pretty cool. I happened to do some animation a the other day. A light board. That was fun. Pardon? A light board? Yeah, it's a board made of light. I opened the box and it just emitted out into the room. And I was like, darn. <laughs> essentially, essentially, it's just a plate. Like, it's, it's like, like a, it's just like the thing el- from the bottom of the chest that Link opens up. And like, there's a cool it's- sword in there. He like throws that out and he goes and reaches in and gets the light thing that generates all that glow. Yeah, and just uses it as a pretty solid weapon. Because like I had it. And the way it works is like an, it's an LED board, but the light is pushed through it. It cuts through it along the paper axis, but then comes out the end of the, in a beam. So I like <laughs> threw it on the couch, and it like hit my housemate in the eyes. It was like, <laughs> he was like, ah! <laughs> I was like, it's like an LED board. It hasn't got any lumens in it. And then I looked at it and went, oh, it's quite bright. But yeah, you can put it behind paper and then the paper's see-through and you're like, whoa. Wow. Now I can trace and you can trace your drawings and then you can make animations with it. So I guess you could say it turns out you were a tracer main all along. Yes. Except I can't aim. <laughs> I, absolutely. Yes. Top, top. In a sense, games are animation. I mean, ga- well. yeah, games are just interactive animation. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's fun tracing things, pretending. It was five dollars from eBay, and it came like instantly. I was like, wow. But also, if you're following Zeb's like arc, he did arc. spend a lot on a really good tablet to <laughs> digitally do art. 
And now he's I like, like I need to go I back to basics to learn. I, the, the thing is, okay, I guess this is actually kind of like a learnable thing. If you are into art and you think that buying a better device will make you better at art, it doesn't. Oh, no. It makes you worse, if anything, because you're not used to the new tool. And you go, wow, paper's way better still. <laughs> But I mean, it's still a amazing. Like, it's still yeah. amazing to have a computer you can draw on. Like, that's still fun. Yeah, um, and it means it, it, I see it as an investment. Instead of buying paints, I've bought a lot of paints all at once in the form of a computer, and, then and I can like, paint on it man, forever. I wish I didn't buy all my paints in bulk at the start of my hobby, <laughs> and now you're buying like other paints. Yeah. Because you're starting to do physical medium. Um, and I, yeah, and I have since bought paints. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. <laughs> and a light board. And I went through the quest of... Make, like, I got the light board, which was the obvious solution to my problem of animating, which I already have a solution for in the form of a computer I can draw with you, layers and photos. You could have which set the computer the, to a white screen and just put paper on top of it. I don't want to damage my, my cool computer. I'm not using a, a regular... Like pen on that surface. No, but how it is my how, baby. How I am, juicy would is, the irony be? Yeah, it's just my light board. Like, wow, that's a cool computer. Yeah, I use it to prop up my <laughs> paper. <laughs> it's a great, it's a great easel. <laughs> when I stand it up this way. Um, but yeah, I went to this effort of like trying to find because you get transparent paper, but it only exists in normal. Flip books which move upwards. You can't open them like a regular book. Yeah. I'm doing hand movements, but I don't know how to describe the movements I'm trying to describe Just say, with words. Say, like, the the action of the hand movement as if it was in, like, an adventure game. You pick up the book and open it from the bottom instead of the side. It's crazy, and you hate it. Um, <laughs> take five so damage. <laughs> yeah, take the Yeah. <laughs> Take sanity damage because you're like, <laughs> I don't like this. So I went to the effort of getting a hole punch, pulling apart another art book. Wow, a, and hole, making, a hole punch? Yeah, I punched a heap of holes in the book <laughs> with my fists and a tiny little thing. And then made a ring bound transparent flip book. Yeah. <laughs> that I can draw in and animate in. I'm like, wow, this is really cool. And then I found a light board. I'm like, oh, this is better. Oh, okay. It took me so long to punch all those holes. In my bespoke stationery that <laughs> did you take the whole punch was- back and be like yeah i didn't this wasn't right for me i don't want this now here you go You're like you've obviously punched a bunch of holes with this i can see on the blade yeah no i oh, like the wait i'm returning the whole punch or the book you're returning the whole punch oh the whole punch oh i acknowledge that joke as if i got it and i didn't get it here's all of the punch um, like a big bowl of it. No, you don't return the, the paper. You just return the hole puncher and be like, yeah, um, this isn't good. I don't need it anymore. And be like, you've obviously used it. I can see. This has it's- been worn down to a, <laughs> to a tiny, like, blunt a nub. nib. <laughs> These aren't good for that many holes and you've ruined it. <laughs> just sharpen it. <laughs> can I get a new hole for my punch? A new punch from my hole? I don't know. But yeah, animations are fun, man. It feels like magic. You do three drawings that string ra- vaguely together and you're like, look, I'm a wizard. Everyone should do it. Everyone should animate it, make a thing. For animation day. I don't think everyone should animate. I think anyone everyone who, should animate. if you want to animate. Yeah, no. Even if you don't want to. No. Don't, do it. Don't make people do it, this don't. task. No. It's an intensive hobby. If, if you don't want it, you're the if the le- less you want it, the more you should do it. No, that's not at all. That's how hobbies work, right? Well, I mean, that's what it's kind of like one of those industries that once you actually do it, you're like, I hate this. I have to draw a million drawings. <laughs> Why did I pick the version of drawing where I draw the same thing a million <laughs> times? But I mean, we have computers now. That's not. That doesn't mean and anything. Three D software that just does it all. It doesn't just do it all, though. You still have to, like, make everything function like that. No, you just go, Alexa, and you describe what you want to have an animation of, and it does it. But it's in Bitmoji animation. (laughs) The worst form of animation. (laughs) You don't feel like a wizard when you make those. No. You feel like the opposite of a wizard. 
a barbarian. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Is that the opposite of a wizard? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, I guess they're like, it's like, um... One's intelligent scaled and one's strength scaled. Yeah, it's like it, when TV shows put, like, two odd... Uh, two people together as, like, an odd couple. Like, Frasier mm. and, and his brother. Yeah, that's his brother? Which one's the wizard and which one's the barbarian? Is Frasier the wizard? I guess. No, the because barbarian. the other one was really dignified. Yeah, I guess he's the barbarian then. Frasier's a barbarian. Yeah. Wow. Which one's Fraser? Kelsey Grammer. <laughs> Is that Seinfeld? That's what no, I'm picturing, no. but I know it's not that. No. Um, Frasier is the one with the sideshow... Not, yeah, sideshow Bob. What? The Simpsons? Yeah. And it all ties what? back together, people. Ouroboros. <laughs> wow, we've just come full circle. So, Kelsey Grammer is sideshow Bob. And... He's also Frasier. Is a, his oh, wow. main role. So, Frasier played Kelsey... Frasier didn't play Kelsey Grammer. Frasier played Sideshow Bob. Not Kelsey Wait, Grammer so played Sideshow Bob, sorry. Who did Sideshow Bob play? Sideshow Bob played the Barbarian <laughs> in Conan the Barbarian. Uh, 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 that's a real thing. I did. We should start talking more things in terms of which one's the Barbarian and which one's the Wizard. Yeah. Lord of the Rings, you have Gandalf. He's the Barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> and the <laughs> Hobbit, he's the Wizard. <laughs> I mean, in that, in the context of it, yeah, kind. I mean, a little bit. I mean, Gandalf's going to be more physically able to grapple someone than Frodo. Well, yeah, if Frodo and Gandalf lived in like a house, which one would be the messy one? He'd definitely be Gandalf Abs with all his crap. Um, yeah, definitely Gandalf. He'd be just potions and yeah, paper. So that makes Fro Frodo the wizard. Yeah, <laughs> just like clean up, clean up. <laughs> you, you, things can now and he's just like oh ho, ho, i'll clean this up exactly when i intend to <laughs> <laughs> and then he'll fire out a dragon and smoke everywhere or something rips bong <laughs> <laughs> out comes a dragon <laughs> oh. oh god okay i think i think we've done pretty good for this episode um, I don't, I'm not using a software that gives me a time anymore at the moment. It just says 2001. Is that enough? I think that's about as many. Okay. If we just last like 10 more seconds, it'll, we'll be up to 2018 and we'll be ready to go. All right. Let's go. So just, um, right. pontificate for a moment. Uh, what's pontificate? Oh, uh, it's just talking, rambling, I think. Oh, so you know, like when you just sort of say words a heap and just like keep making them up. I'm pretty and, like, sure. You extend your sentence out indefinitely. All right, we're at 2015 now. Um, so oh man, or, you remember? You remember 2015? Yeah. What happened then? I don't know. Probably the Rebecca Black song. I think. 2015. No, that's probably 2011. Friday. Yeah, that was, was definitely in, like 2010. That was in school when that happened. That was years ago. Yeah. Oh no, we're in 2023. And oh, it's no. time to end Come the back. show. Go back. Stop it. We have to go. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> have a good animation day. Um, so have a good animation day um, on us. Like, here's a fiver. Go get yourself a DVD of an animation. Um, and thanks for listening. If you want if you want a button uh, or you want to get our emails when we finally start sending out some, go to buttyearpodcast.com forward slash friend. Yeah. Zeb doesn't know anything about that because I said it all up independently of him. Um, but you can also find us on Twitter at it. But yeah Pod. I think it's real. Oh, you can also go to ButYearPodcast.com forward slash... Um, oh, what was it? Um, hang on, pontificate for a moment. Uh, um, um, uh, the 28th, it's October 28th. It's the 301st day of the year. 302nd in leap years in the Gregorian calendar. There are 64 days remaining until the end of the year. We're 82% of the way through the year. That's terrifying. <laughs> On this day in 1061, Empress Agnes, acting as regent for her son, brung about the election for Bishop Catullus, the anti-pope Honorius II. What? <laughs> what is going on? What is an anti-pope? Is that... Is this the Satan Church? Is this the Satan Church? He was, he was, man, he was the Bishop of Palmer, which in Australian lingo means a <laughs> delicious meal. <laughs> you mean, you mean palmy? He's a, he was the Bishop of, uh, of palmy and chips. 
I think you mean the Bishop of Chicken Parmigiana. Um, so if you go to buttyourpodcast.com forward slash I don't know how to use the shift key, you can find Zeb on Twitter. Yeah. Does that actually forward to my Twitter? Yes. It's not that I don't know how. I actively refuse to use the shift key. I think it is, it is a sinful button. Something the anti-pope would partake in. <laughs> if anything. Um, that's all my jokes for the week. That's it. We're, we're done. And sorry we were gone yeah. for so long. Um, we'll probably see you next year after it, this. Maybe we'll be back this, with another like few episodes for the year, but we'll see. So this guy, it, it. Oh no, it does elaborate what an what an anti pope is. Okay, it's just, this is just the last fact we need for this episode. Um, an anti pope is a person in opposition to the pope. I assume they're inverted, kind of like Shadow Link from like the mirror and, dimension. Yeah, they like mirror the pope exactly. <laughs> you can never get around his- him. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. He got in again. <laughs> Who elected an anti pope? Uh, he has to, like, see ya. I don't know. You have to, like, pass through them to, like, swap sides. Yeah, you have to, like, trick them. Like, because yeah. they exactly mirror you, it's, it's not that hard. You just have to, like, r- walk up against the wall for a while until they walk off the other edge <laughs> or something. All right. I think that, that, was, that was Zelda rules in Link's Awakening. <laughs> Um, That's how you beat the rabbit creatures. It sure is. Um, Until next time. Bye. Bye. Teflon. <laughs> Teflon. Is that your is that your om phrase? Your own phrase? Oh, crispy Steve. Teflon. <laughs> crispy Steve. Be like Teflon. All your insults bounce off me and reflect back onto you. I guess. Is Teflon bouncy, or is that Velcro? I uh, know. Like, that's... is Teflon just a Velcro? Not Tef- is Velcro bouncy. I know for a fact Velcro isn't bouncy. Where did you find that fact out? <laughs> I touched some. With my clothes. This, this doesn't feel bouncy at all. My woolen clothes. And I was like, this is the opposite of bouncy. Okay. All right. We're, we're ready. Um, I'll start the show. because This is content. This is, this is all This is all good. No, it was too staggered. Yeah, it's great. No, that's what we want now. We get rid of the pauses. That's not... No, this is the part that the automation can't fix. No, it's great. <laughs> Maybe we'll fix okay. it. Yeah. All right. It'll be, it'll be good. We can add it as post scene, con- post credits content. Hey, if you like this show, you might enjoy my new wordplay comedy podcast called One Letter Better, where me and a good friend podcaster guest sit down and take the titles of things you submit, love, and send in and make them, well, you get it. It's One Letter Better! Available on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts.